Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to go over how to make your lights flicker. So, for example, let's say we have some candles here, and uh, we want the lights to uh, actually have a little bit of a pulse uh, as as time goes on. So, for example, if you're making an animation, you want the candles to actually flicker. So I'm going to show you three ways in creating this. If you want to follow along, you can download this at turbosquid.com. So, all right, let's get started. So if you take a look at the scene, we have uh, three candles, uh, some candle fire coming from here, and of course a base. So something very simple. We also have two directional lights, which is giving us our, our ability to be able to see our scene. All right, so let's start with create a light and I'm going to be using a point light. And the reason why I'm going to be using a point light is because it's going to be emitting light from a point and then scattering outward. So let's go ahead and place it right around here. Now I do not need it to impact these pieces of geometry. Oh, let's take a look at our outline here. Here it is right here. And I just wanted to demonstrate what it's going to do on the side. So before we start uh, plugging away, so let's create a plane. And let's take a look at our scene right now. So we're going to press play. And right now our point light's not very strong. So I'm going to hide my directional lights so we can see the effect. Now it looks like our candles are in fact emitting light, but that's just an emissive map. So it does shed a tiny little bit of light, but not enough to, uh, to make a difference. And not only that, it doesn't flicker. Okay. So here we have our point light. I'm just going to just make a selection here. And what I want to do is go to our point light. Sorry, I usually work with two screens. So this is a little bit of a challenge and let's increase our intensity. Let's press play. And then let's take a look at our exposure. So we can increase this to one and already we're getting a nicer result. So uh, I'm going to use a color temperature. I do want it to make it feel like a candle. So candle lights a little bit orangey. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of that orange glow. And let's go ahead and increase my exposure a little bit more just so I can really see the impact. Nice. Really what we want is to manipulate is the intensity of the light. So what I mean by that is that we wanted a flicker. We want it to go from zero to five or or any value in between just randomly. So there's, I'm going to show you two ways that you can flicker. One is you can in fact set a key for the intensity that you want. So for example, if I want this to be at five, I can, whoops, I can, uh, oh boy, right click set key. And then I can go to, let's say three and then turn it off or maybe just do a one intensity set key, and then I can continue on from there. So it's going to look like it's flickering, but that's going to be a long, that's going to take a long time to keyframe all of these things. And I can do infinity, but uh, again, it's going to take a while. So I'm going to show you a faster way and uh, break the connection. So we're going to be using an expression. Let's right click on intensity and click and select create new expression. So this is a great way of making something happen automatically in the background. So you don't have to keyframe it. So I'm going to grab this. This is the point light. This is the point light shape, which is the point light itself. And then here is our intensity, which is the attribute. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it. Then I'm going to make it equal to something. So what do I want this intensity to equal to? Well, um, I could put the number five, which is exactly what we had before, but I wanted to use a random function. What I mean by that is that I want to randomly se select R A N D randomly, randomly select two values between zero and let's say one. And then to finish any type of expression, you need a colon. Click create. And you'll see that we have a purple box now surrounding our intensity. What that means, it has a, an expression connected to it. So now when I go through, you'll notice that the light automatically flickers, which is awesome because that's exactly what we want. We want it to flicker between zero and one, but what if we wanted to be more intense? Let's right click, edit expression. 
What if we don't want it to disappear? So I'm going to say, let's do a random function between 1 and 5. Let's edit that. So now when I go through here, as I start scrolling through the timeline, you'll notice that it never actually, the light never turns off. It gets faded, but it never turns off. And that is a very quick way of getting our light to flicker, which I personally like very much. So that's two ways I can show you how to change the intensity. You can keyframe it, which takes forever. This random function is really nice, but some of you may think, well, this is a little bit fast. This is gonna flicker very quickly. Is there any way to make it flicker slower? So then we're gonna get a little bit more complicated math. So, well, for some may be complicated, for others, maybe not so much. It really depends what your range is, but let's uh, right click edit expression. So instead of using a random function, we can use something a little bit smoother, which is called sine. If you know a little bit of uh, calculus slash algebra, you should know that in it's called sine, and then we need some sort of numerical value that goes with it. So sine, and yes, it's spelled sin, S-I-N, sine over time. Now when we do this, and I'm going to edit, you're going to notice that it disappears, but then it brings back and then it comes down. So remember that a sine is a wave. So it goes up to one, down to negative one, up to one, and you can see these values change right here. So if I go to the left, you'll notice that the values kind of smoothly go up and down. So it's a wave. Um, but we really need it to be a little bit more intense. So what we're going to tell it is I don't want it to go at negative values. I want it to remain at one. So sine by time plus one. So now it's going to go between one and two. So then as you can see by these values, you're going to notice that we get a wave and the numbers go up to two and then they kind of go down again. So nice wave. So it does get pretty low. It does get to zero. So just keep that in mind that it will turn off. So if we want to keep going and then it kind of slows down and then it disappears. So that's going to be a nice way like signs. So for example, if you see, um, if you needed something pulsing, for example, this would be a really good way of doing it. However, we might want it to go a little faster, right? So let's multiply that, multiply that by 20. Don't forget the colon. I always forget the semicolon. I always forget that. Edit. Okay, now we're getting some really good values here. Now we're going to have some values. It's still going to be a sine wave, but notice how intense that color is. So we go, and you can see the value goes up to 34, goes pretty high up there, and then it goes back down. So now we're getting some really intense values. So that's how you can control how um, the intensity of your light. So those are three examples of how to do it. We uh, can keyframe it, we can uh, use the random function, or you can use a sine wave. It's really up to you what you prefer. I personally like, I want my candles to flicker very quickly, so I'm gonna use the random function. So edit expression, let's do random. Uh, I'm gonna do one through six, and the semicolon, click edit, and expression, why? Oh, I need a D. Randa. There we go. Now it's happier. All right. So now that I have my random function, stop this. I'm going to move it up to my candlelight. Duplicate this. Let's look in our four views, make sure that it's looking okay. I'm gonna kind of place it on top just to make sure. Duplicate that one. I need to rise a little bit. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, we're getting some light. We can see the flickering lights. It's kind of neat. Um, I think it needs to be more more intense. I'm a little concerned. So notice that the random functions are not duplicated. So that's something to keep in mind. So let me go to Windows Outliner. It's pretty easy. Right click, Edit Expression. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to grab this, right click, 
edit create edit expression this is going to be uh, number two okay so this is important because you got to tell it which expression does this impact which is uh, light number two create and this one I might change a little bit I might do um, 0.5 to 4 just to keep it a little faded um, I want to make sure there we go make sure that it's a little bit different than the other ones I don't need the same intensity for everything and I'm going to grab this again, grab point light number three. Might be easier if you right click create expression. So this is here. So I'm going to press that, copy, paste, equals. And this one, maybe I want to make it more intense too. Whoops, not 20. And seven. Create. And you can see that my lights are starting to already be very intense you can see the lights are flickering on and off in different intensities which is great and the next thing that I would do is kind of tweak the shadows and maybe even make them a little bit more intense it really depends what you are trying to achieve so hopefully that was helpful that was a quick tutorial on how to make your lights flicker um, it's a little bit of an expression but um, a little bit of math but nothing that you can't handle uh, thank you very much for listening. Don't forget that you to uh, go to my website at academicphoenixplus.com and subscribe to my um, channel. Subscribe to my newsletter so you can get some updates about what's going on and also uh, workshops and free downloads. So thank you again for listening. I truly appreciate it. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you find if you think somebody would find this helpful. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to make comments below or email me, and I will talk to you guys next time.